Hey, one, two, one, two. Yes, last round of the European Chess Club Cup against a very strong international master from. Let's see together. Hello, everyone, and then welcome back to the channel for my round number seven recap from the European Chess Club Cup in Serbia, the final round of the tournament, and my last game with the legendary Bersheva Chess Club. This was an emotional and exciting match where I faced a young and talented international master from Israel, rated 2435 guy. Levine with the black pieces. So, before we dive in, stop the video for a moment and guess the result. Do you think I managed to finish my journey with Bersheva on high note? Or, you know, maybe not. And as always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe my channel just to support me. You know, it's very important for me, you know, to get from you the motivation that I need to upload every single day video. So now let's jump into the game. So I'm playing with the black pieces and let's see how it starts. Now at a free d5 and now b3. So Guy Levine is going for an opening without so many theory, right? So let's see how it goes. Bishop f5, bishop b2, e6, g3 and now h6. h6, uh, this move just providing the bishop uh, the way to escape on h7 in case of, I don't know, knight d3, maybe d3, knight bd2, e4. So I have bishop h7 and everything is under control. Uh, bishop g2 was played um, by Guy Levin and here I played a move knight f6, of course. d3 and bishop h7 going uh, for this diagonal and that's it, just uh, developing my pieces now. So castle, bishop e7. Knight bd2, castle, c4, c6, until now, you know, looking very uh, nice for me, everything is under control, I have some options with a5, a4, maybe knight bd7, knight c5, maybe queen b6 also, but overall there is nothing to be afraid for white and also for black. So queen c2 was played and now a5. So this is nice move, I think overall a4 is the threat, uh, for example, I don't know, let's see, rook fd1, I think a4 will be interesting move, after b takes a4, queen a5, uh, something around this and queen takes a4 will be the next move. The problem with this plan that the b file will be open for, for white, for example, rook db1, queen takes, queen takes, I don't know, rook takes, and here some maybe bishop d4 and I have some problems with the b7 pawn. Uh, so yeah, it's not so easy, but a5 was very uh, good for me just also to uh, to get some space in the queen side, right? Maybe now knight a6, knight b4, uh, just developing move. So he played a move bishop c3, and here I played a move knight bd7. Also another interesting move was to play the move c5, and the point here is just uh, to press d4, right? With knight c6 and e5. Uh, so I'm not sure what white... Uh, thought about this because after c takes d5 just e takes d5 and the next move will be knight c6 right and, and that's it for example e4 knight c6 and this pawn on d3 will be weak uh, i don't know how we will play maybe rook c8 rook f uh, rook e8 sorry so yeah black is doing perfect here c5 was a very interesting move uh, for black maybe knight e5 but here d4 bishop b2 and queen c7 probably attacking this knight and you know e5 will be coming very soon. Uh, so I play the move knight bd7. Also, I think overall should be fine. He played the move queen b3, and here I play the move queen b6. Another time c5 was very strong because, as you can see, e3 is not uh, possible because of bishop takes d3. You can see that my bishop here is doing just perfect job in this diagonal. So yeah, queen b6 also fine move, but not something uh, very dangerous for for white. Uh, so we play the move rook a b1 and here i play the move rook fd8 so now you know like i have some options and some ideas to press c5 d4 and if he's playing the move at knight e5 how we played in the game i have just knight takes c5 bishop takes c5 and now knight e8 i think this was a very strong move 
Uh, also, I can put him like you know may may maybe some um, I don't know. The, you know, it, it it was really strong. Maybe the the green, uh, yeah, green uh, color will be will be great here. So overall, after ninety eight, the the possibilities here for black was just bishop f six uh, and also d four, right? So after d four, you can see that the bishop on e five just uh, trap, right? Uh, there is nothing to play with him, and f six and g five or f six e five. Uh, is the threat so 98 was a very clever move i think also just um to defend the pawn on g7 and here yeah d4 is a threat so you plan to move knight f3 here uh, of course just to avoid the move uh, d4 i plan to move f6 and here the point was after bishop c3 just to press e5 and here is c takes d5 i thought c takes d5 and here you know d4 knight c7 knight d5 knight c3 some things about about it bishop b4 king h8 rook a c8 so many interesting lines here but of course i have a very good uh, central pawns right so he planned to move bishop d4 after f6 and this for in my op opinion of course it was a very big mistake because c5 now bishop c3 and now d4 bishop e1 and e5 and you know it's just crazy i'm doing perfect here right as you can see my pawns are doing just awesome the rook on f1 is not playing the game rook on b1 is bad and this position was very very uh, good for me i thought that i have a very good advantage let's see 92 he played very fast as you can see in the 20 move uh, we have 47 and 48 minutes in the clock and it seems very good for me so probably maybe i will uh, give a, a best game uh, in Brasheva, the last game would be my best the last dance Let's see. So f5, I think of overall another very strong move. I really want to play the move knight f6 or knight d6 with e4, move bishop f6. Uh, and now he played the move bishop d5. And probably Nitsan uh, from, I don't know, from uh, three, four, five years ago will grab this bishop immediately after rook takes d5, c takes, and something about knight f6. But I was not sure about his position because knight c4. Queen c7 and d6, bishop takes knight d6, queen d6 and a3. This is the particular position that I thought in the game and I thought like b4, I don't know, I don't see like winning um, plan here for black, but computer says it's it's like very very strong. So after bishop d5 I play the move king h8, uh, e4, very strong move I think by Guy Levin is, you know, until now it, sh it feels to me that uh, he played very, you know, like softly, a little bit, uh, a little bit passive maybe. But here, bishop d5 and e4 was very strong, uh, you know, like a combination because he understand in this position he already understand that his position is not so good, right? And after e4, it's 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 not so easy for me to you know like to break it out. So I played the move knight f6, and now f3 was played. Another very strong move. Uh, it's, it's like you said, you know, I, you will not win me today. Uh, it's, it will be a draw, and that's it. I'm, I'm doing like a, a four, fortress, and that's it. So knight rook f8, I played uh, probably good move uh, a4, and this was like magic. You know, f a4 doesn't want to push b4, just want to close every single. Um, thing in the position unbelievable for me i played with rook a8 now queen c2 bishop d8 queen d1 uh, a little bit you know like every single move i'm pr preparing some uh, variations queen e2 queen d7 king g2 and now g5 was played and here i had uh, some variations in my head about g4 I, I was not sure about it and now he took on f5 and for me it was like very very uh, exciting moment because I, I thought that it was a, a blunder or maybe mistake because knight takes d5 c takes and now bishop takes f5 attacking of course with bishop h3 and the rook on uh, f1 and but now g4 of course bishop g6 and now bishop g3 attacking this pawn on e5 and here queen takes d5 grab the pawn i'm up a pawn and uh, two bishops so this position should be winning but now rook b e1 and i'll play the move rook e6 
So the point here was, of course, after bishop takes e5, just king g8 with rook f8 with bishop c7. You know, I will take this bishop, right? And a winning position. So he played a move knight c4, and here I played rook f8. And another time, of course, after knight takes e5, uh, just king g7, for example, with bishop c7 or bishop uh, f6 and grabbing this knight. Very uh, easy. But he played a move queen d1, and here b6, uh, some maneuvering here, uh, you know, Think about the pawn on a5, rook f2, bishop f6, rook uh, fe2, and now the king is coming, h3, rook e7, rook f1. Somewhere around this position, uh, my opponent Guy Levin uh, offered me a draw, but you know, the position on the boards were a little bit crazy, so I wanted to, to see some uh, something uh, is going on there. Um, yeah, but we played a little bit, and after king e8, queen c2, king d8, I offered the draw, and it's maybe very surprising for you, but I can tell you some things. First of all, our team just won like several games in a row, and for me it was like, okay, we won the tournament, you know, not the tournament, we won the game, we won the match, uh, it was very uh, good feeling for me. Secondly, I was not sure how to break it out. You know, I was not sure because it's not so e easy. If I'm playing the move bishop e8, bishop c6, he can play the move knight d2, knight d4. If I'm playing h5, I don't know, g5 pawn is weak and maybe, you know, after h5, I, I need to take the pawn on g4, but h takes with rook h1 and maybe this rook will come, I don't know. So it, it's really important to understand that it's not so easy. But, you know, after the game, I thought like, Maybe it was a mistake to offer a draw because overall I'm playing for a win here. Yeah, I don't have anything to lose uh, and just play chess. But I can tell you that I was really tired. Uh, I was really tired for me. You know, I didn't play chess so much time uh, until this moment. And in the classical variations, of course, it's not so easy uh, for me to handle seven days in a row of chess games uh, after, you know, like working and i have students and you know i'm doing a lot of stuff in my life uh, so yeah it's it was very very difficult for me but at least you know i, I played another very strong uh, game i think overall against a very strong player and talented from israel uh, guy levin international master i really hope for him um to to get the the grandmaster uh, title soon enough uh, to get the norms of course and the rating He's very kind, a uh, personal player. Uh, and I think overall, you know, this was a, a really nice tournament for me. So yeah, I, I, I really want to thank you everyone for watching this. And you know, I, it's, it's kind of uh, not a easy moment uh, to tell you, but, uh, but this game was more than just a game uh, for me. It marked the end of incredible journey with the Brasheva uh, chess club right i want to take a moment to reflect and say how much of an honor it has been to play for this amazing club over the past five years under the leadership of our captain and manager ilana david i want also to to thank a huge thank maybe a huge thank you uh, all my incredible teammates the grandmasters Tamir Nabati, Michael Royce, Viktor Michalevsky, Alexander Huzman, Ori Kobo, and Alon Greenfeld. It's been a privilege to play alongside you. I will forever cheer, cherish the four championship we won together. You know, the teamwork and the lifelong friendship we built. Uh, and, and, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm going for the new club, uh, Rishon Lezion. Uh, I wish uh, for Rishon and also for me, um good luck in the you know the friendship and the uh, you know like the journey we will we'll have together um in Rishon Lezion they are playing very strong players of course Grandmaster uh, Boris Gelfand Maxim Rochten uh, Evgeny Zanan of course uh, over Bronstein Alexander Kaspi Nimrod Weinberg uh, you know just amazing amazing team uh, and also you know, maybe our junior guys will come also to play alongside us. So yeah, it's it will be amazing. Uh, I hope uh, to play my best in the next year. Uh, and don't forget, if you like this recap, please subscribe 
and turn on notification to catch more chess content coming soon. So thank you all for your support and I will see you in the next videos, in the next tournament, maybe next year also you will have my recaps about the European Chess Club Cup but in, with Richard Etienne. Another last thing, don't forget the Outpost Chess website, right? You must sign up from the link in the description. It's free. You have so much things to learn there. And you, know, you can play for money. You can play tournaments over the board and also online. So just have some fun there. Uh, and see you. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.